You've seen some of the other videos. You gotta be thinking, man, this is looking good. I watched her parade around all over the place and not bring anything to you. We've been working on it, okay? Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone, and this is Jess. She's gonna help me today with Shock's gunfire introduction. If you've been watching, we are preparing her for the South Dakota hunting season. That's happening here in just a couple months. I need to get her ready. The next thing on her checklist is gunfire introduction. Um, gunfire conditioning is just what I said, a conditioning process. It's not gonna happen in one session, but we're gonna show you what that process looks like, how we're able to progress with her, and three huge mistakes that people make on an average basis and how you can avoid them when you're working with your dog. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, I'm gonna send Jess down. Um, she's gonna be about 100 yards. That's kind of the magic number you hear from a lot of people, somewhere in the vicinity of 80, 90, 100 yards. Now, there are a few things that we need to be on the same page about. What is the signal, okay? Is it you take your hat off or you do whatever? It's just gotta be something that you both are very clear about and are on the same page. Mine will be, I'm going to watch my puppy and when I want the shot, I'm going to go. And as soon as my hand is in the air, that is the time that I want the shot to happen. There's not gonna be kind of like a, a guessing game or anything else, it's just gonna be shoot. Now, from a gunner's standpoint, and make sure that whoever your help is either watches this video with you or you go over these things. If you are late on your shot or the gun doesn't do something right or whatever, don't shoot. The timing is very important and what I can see, and I'm going to explain what you're gonna be looking for yourself here in a minute, but what I can see, Jess maybe necessarily cannot, and timing is very important. So, as you head down there, I wanna point out a couple things. First of all, ear protection here. Guys, don't be silly. Wear hearing protection, it's an important part of your life and you can't get that stuff back. Um, we want to get started with her. Today we're going to be utilizing a dead bird, okay? We've had a lot of criticism from folks, hunters and non-hunters alike, that using a live bird is extremely cruel or whatever. And I want to show you what utilizing a dead bird is going to look like with her. And then if we don't see quite enough excitement, I'm gonna actually switch over to a live bird so that you can see on camera what the difference is and what the true benefits of that live bird can be if your dog isn't as excited. Now, we've also shown in another video that we utilize bumpers for a gunfire introduction. If your dog is super excited about bumpers, you can use that. If your dog's not as excited and maybe is more excited about feathers, we can use a dead bird. But if your dog's not as excited about those things, we have to bring out the live bird, which stimulates the dog's natural prey drive and desire to chase. And that is going to give us enough to pull their focus away from the sound. That is the key. The number one thing you're looking for when you watch your dog is that they don't pay attention to the noise. If they do, you need to slow down, take a step back, not shoot any more that session, slow the whole process down, extend your distance, and then build more drive and desire. The first mistake that we see people make that I wanna to touch on today is paying attention to your environment. What I mean by that is where you're actually doing the gunfire introduction. We need to be out in open spaces. You can see there's nothing around us. Now there are buildings behind us, but they're again, a minimum of 100 yards away. The noise bouncing off of those buildings can cause some weird echoes and different things that can startle dogs. Don't fully understand it, but I can tell you that I've seen it happen firsthand speaking from experience only, I have made this mistake and have learned from it. We're putting the gunner an additional 100 yards away so that the gunner is as far away from the building as is we can possibly. If you're in a complete wide open area with no buildings, that's even better. The next thing is, if you've experienced this firsthand, you've probably been in a field or something having a conversation, and if the wind is blowing in your face, the person upwind can't hear you as well. But if you are talking with the wind blowing the sound to the other person, sound travels better. We're going to apply that same concept to here by having Jess B 
speed downwind of us and shoot downwind. So that's pushing most of the sound away from the dog. It's going to be the easiest thing for her to start to build this conditioning process that gunfire is associated with birds and is a good thing. Now, the next thing that we need to be watching for is timing. And this is the another big mistake that we see people make, okay? You want to be shooting, calling for your shot when the dog is actively as focused as possible on chasing said object, okay? In mid chase, you are calling for the shot. You're not calling when the dog gets to the bird or the bumper or the object. You're not calling before the dog has really keyed in on the fact that they're chasing something. Too early and too late are going to be your problem. You need that just right moment. Don't call for it if you don't think it's perfect and don't shoot unless you think that your timing is right as well. So then the last thing that we need to be talking about is overdoing your sessions. This is a conditioning process. I see far too many times that people feel like, all right, I did my gunfire introduction and it was one session and they shot 10 or 15 times and worked all the way through and did all of these different things. No, do a few reps, keep your dog pumped up, super excited for what's going on and then do it again and gradually shorten the distance and gradually increase the amount of noise that you're using. Today, we're using Kent 20 or 12 gauge, excuse me, blank loads out of a 12 gauge break open shotgun. You can utilize those poppers if you can find them. Um, we also sometimes utilize 209 primers and a blank pistol. Those are going to be similar-ish noises. Then you can move up to a lighter gauge shotgun if you've got it, like a light load in a 20 or a 410. The more gradual, the better. But if your dog's showing no signs, you can move a little faster. So poppers to 20 gauge, 12 gauge, you should be okay. But continue to monitor this along the way. Don't overdo each individual training session. I think those are all of the important things we need to cover to get started. Jess, why don't you head down um, about to that tree I'm going to be working right out here in front. And then again, my signal is hand up in the air is me calling for a shot. Got it. Perfect. Okay. We're going to get her headed that direction before I let shot go. Now, if you've been watching her videos, she's collar conditioned today. I'm using DT Systems H2O 1820. This is a solid unit. We use it on a regular basis in training, fully rechargeable. Um, and she is now collar conditioned. So I can keep her here with me as well as hopefully, good, hopefully get her back once she grabs the birds and wants to run around with them. Okay. All right. So we've got a dead bird here. This is a pigeon, pigeon, chucker, quail, whatever you got will work well. Now well, this pup seems fired up. I'm going to go ahead and put my hearing protection in too. I've got some earplugs. This is something to pay attention to. You've got to see. This is what I wouldn't say is her normal behavior, um, but we might have caught her right during mid-morning nap time or something like that, okay? If we don't see some drive and desire pep up for this, then it's going to mean we're going to keep this pretty short, may not do much at all, and then move on to a different day. All right, earplugs are in for me. hey -o. All right, pup, we're gonna start by teasing her. Ooh, hey, there's some pep. Good, I'm gonna do one toss first to truly evaluate what level of excitement we've got here. Good dog. Hey, 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 hey. I'm running a little bit of vibrate. Good, get her to come back to me with, you've seen some of the other videos, you gotta be thinking, man, this is looking good. I watched her parade around all over the place and not bring anything to you. We've been working on it, okay? So now we're gonna do it again, and I am ready to call for my shot on this one. Good. On the way out there, she was focused, and pay attention to the fact that we didn't see her pay attention at all. Hey, 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 good. Good girl, she says, I want this bird. So I'm gonna hit vibrate. Hey, good. Moving away from her is gonna help encourage movement toward me. Good dog. And then don't instantly take this away from her. Let her hold on to it a second. That's a pretty cool thing. Good dog, good dog, good dog. Okay, now, Shock is pretty pumped up for this bird. 
I would say that we can get by just utilizing this dead bird for her. If your dog's not showing as much enthusiasm as her, you may need to switch to that live bird. All right. Good. All right, so this looked really good. No attention to the gunfire at all. She looked down and saw Jessica, but she was focused on the bird. Good. Hey, 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 hey. Come here. She was focused on the bird the whole time, ran right out to it. That's what we want to see. Good dog. Now I'm going to signal. I'm going to have my gunner come in a little bit closer. Go ahead, about 10 paces or so. That's a really good adjustment. 10, 15 paces closer is going to give us enough of a gradual change in how loud that's going to get for her. Now as the noise gets louder, I actually want to pull her focus more. Keep it focused on the bird. So I'm going to get out a live bird. I've got um, flight feathers here. We're going to pull some of these flight feathers out, which is going to uh, prevent the bird from being able to fly away, but it is going to be able to flap around. Now this flapping excitement, if I hold the bird here, hey, you can see her stop and point it or stand and look at it. But if, watch this, okay? If it starts flapping around again, what does she want to do? She wants to get it, right? So that pumps her up even more. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to make sure she's focused. I'm going to toss the bird straight out this direction, let her go for it, and then I'm going to call for my next shot. Good. Still no attention to detail. Bird tried to go, which kept her again focused on the task at hand. Good. I want to do one more with this. We've got a lot of excitement with this live bird still. You can tell she's still pumped up. Go ahead and come in this way. She's going to take about 10, 15 more paces this way. Now we're down to in the vicinity of 50-ish yards. It's a great place to end your first session if you can get this far at all. Good. Again, I want her focused here. See that bird jumping around? That gives her just an extra boost of excitement. This is really cool. I need to focus on it. I need to stay focused on it. And it allows you to get through your gunfire introduction while building an association with we're going to put this bird, bird is now dead, and we'll finish talking about this. Go ahead and come on back up, okay? That's where I'm going to end this first session for shock. We've done a great job with the gunfire introduction. She's paying 100% attention to the birds themselves, not the gunfire. She didn't once look, she didn't even think about gunfire being down there. That's a combination between having a lot of drive built up as well as having that live bird to continue to pull her focus to the task at hand. These are bird dogs, guys. Gunfire introduction is a very important part of this process, so do it right by not making those three big mistakes that we see all the time. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Shock. Jess, thanks for your help today. We'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.